Hey everyone, I am joined by Patrick Stone to talk about Command Prompt. So we're building this as things everyone should know about Command Prompt, basically useful commands and items that will get you through troubleshooting or looking like a hacker on public television <laughs> or something like that. So bring us in here, What's, give us the first item everyone should know about Command Prompt. Um, so when you're using Command Prompt, um, it's not the absolute most powerful command line interface, which I guess says to to me it's it's usable. Any anybody can learn it if they want to. Right. It's not like Linux though. Uh, not exactly. Uh, you know, the, Linux has its terminal, right? Uh, and there are similarities, but not, not exactly the same. And uh, the but the one thing, like if anybody wants to learn about command prompt, the key to all of this, <laughs> the magical awesomeness, is forward slash question mark. Almost every command you want to learn about, <laughs> if you just type in the command and then a space, and then forward slash question mark, it will give you a help menu on how that command works. Right, it gives the flags, mm -hmm. gives what they do, and generally uh, not a good idea to just pull commands off the internet forums and paste them, <laughs> because you don't know what someone's trying to do to your computer. If it's Linux, the equivalent would be like Shamode 777, <laughs> your entire system, which for those who don't know, would basically open up public read-write access to everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> so you don't want a scenario like that, so slash question mark, We'll answer that stuff. Linux the equivalent would be like a man, as in man, manual pages. Manual, yep. Mm -hmm. And for Windows command prompts, what we're focusing on, some of the more useful items would probably be on the troubleshooting side. I've always used sort of scan OS, fix OS, mm -hmm. or fix MBR fix rather. Yeah, fix fix MBR, yep, stuff like that. Yeah, so there's a, a boot rec command. You type in boot, R-E-C, one word, mm -hmm. boot rec. And then you can do the slash question mark and you'll see those commands. So fix MBR fixes the master boot record yeah right. now be careful with that one right there if you try to go and do boot rec from your basic command prompt right. it's not going to work you got to be in um the pe uh so basically like you got to be booting from a flash drive with a windows install disk so right. windows repair mode command prompt is what you're getting at there um and i should say this too if, if you're in startup repair and you click on the command prompt option there you can use boot rec from there right. as well yeah, yeah. But if you're just in like, you, you go to your start menu and Windows is working fine and you do CMD and run as administrator or whatever and type in boot rec, it's going to be like, what's that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's for your own safety, really. Yes. Uh, so that's, that's one of the things. And Windows nowadays is generally smart enough, which I, I hesitate to use that word with Windows, but generally intelligent enough to tell you something's wrong with the MBR something's wrong with OS detection, and you can go into that pre-boot environment and Fix run- Fix a lot of it. Right, run the appropriate commands. If you know how to do the command prompt. <laughs> That's Forward right. slash question mark. <laughs> and scan OS is an important one because if you have multiple OS installs on your drive, mm -hmm. and it's not detecting one that you know is there, you can do scan o fix uh, boot recs and then scan OS, and it'll tell you all the OSs that it detects. Yeah, w when you do scan OS, it's gonna give you a list of the operating systems right. that it finds. And then it's like, which one would you like to add back to the boot configuration right. database? And it's like one, two, three, and you just choose the number. Also useful if your boot up is telling you that there's multiple OSs and you only want one, mm -hmm. and you remove the ones that you don't want there. Mm. Uh, ideally, uninstall them correctly. But uh, what's what's another command prompt? Hit me with another one. Um, so another really useful one is check disk, C-H-K-D-S-K, -K, and then again, forward slash question marks, you can figure out what the flags are, flags, options, whatever you want to call them. Um, and the one you're going to find yourself using most often is slash R, which is a repair. Now, you, you can't do this online, meaning you can't be using your computer and do a repair. So what it will do if you do check disk slash R, got to be running as administrator, by the way, which again... Type in CMD in the start menu. You'll see a CMD pop up there. Right click, choose run as administrator, and then do CHKDSK, and then forward slash R. And it's going to be like, hey, we couldn't do this right now. Would you like us to schedule this to do the right. next time you reboot? And then what it's going to do is it's going to scan the sectors on your hard drive, and it's going to look for bad sectors. Now, if there's information in there that's that's valuable and it can recover that information, it's going to grab it out of there, and then it's going to mark that sector as, hey, don't use this sector anymore. And this makes a drive that is running really slow oftentimes improve. Because what's happening is the drive's trying to read over and over and over again 
on this one bad sector. And you're like, why is this read taking right. forever? And the answer is because the sector is going bad. And then when you run check disk, it's like, hey, I'm not using that sector anymore. And it's like, my hard drive's back to uh, normal again. And, and you can also check the hard drive health too with smart attributes. So if you don't know if there's a problem, but you feel like there might be, go look for any smart SMART attribute reader. Mm -hmm. And then it'll tell you if it thinks sectors are bad or things like that. Yeah. So you can use that first. Uh, pin. Pin commands are good. Excellent one, yep. So that's a really simple one. You can use it right now from your desktop. Mm -hmm. You just type in P-I-N-G space and then give it a domain name or an IP address. Yep. So if you have uh, like Google.com, that's almost always up. Ping Google.com. That will basically give you a, a response time, how long it takes a packet of information to get there and back. Right? Yep, Conclusion. that's right. Yep. And then, uh, and then that'll tell you, is the website down? Is my system down? Whatever, my network? Yeah, you, you're basically checking for network connectivity. I, is your computer connected? And right. That, and, and is it connected to whatever site or IP address you're trying to get to? And if you want some fun trivia, look up pain of death. <laughs> uh, it's not really something you can do anymore, but it's, it's kind of cool information. It's sort of like an early DDoS. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, basically pinging with really large... Packet sizes, yeah. yeah. Um, another really good networking one, IP config. Um, this one is just an information command. That's not true. You can do stuff with it too, meaning that you can release and renew your IP address. Right. So the, the, the process of getting an IP address is called uh, DHCP. It's a protocol. And you, you've got a DHCP server sitting somewhere on your network, whether you know it or not. Most of the time, it's your router. So, like, let's say you got like a Linksys box or a Netgear box or something right. like that. It's got a software DHCP server running on it. So, when your computer joins the network or when your phone hops on the network, it sends out a request and is like, "Hey, is there any DHCP server out there?" And the DHCP server replies back with a message and says, "Yes, I am." The computer's like, "Can I have an IP address?" And the DHCP server's like, "Sure, here's one." Right. And um, so you get this IP address, and if you do IP config release the address you've been given is then released from your computer. And if you do an IP config renew, it does that DHCP, DHCP process again, and then you get another IP right. address, or most of the time, the same IP address back. Yeah, uh, useful if there's like an IP conflict on your internal network or something like that. Absolutely right. And then Traceroute is another networking one that's useful. So I, I have used this a lot on the server admin side, managing the GN server where if I call support and say, hey, there's a really slow response from my server, they'll have me run a trace route. And the point of that is to look at all the different points that your packet of data hits along the way to its, its destination. Yeah, we call, call those hops in the network environments. And so uh, all it's doing is, is it's saying, okay, when I'm at the server, what's the default gateway for the server? And it shows that hop to that, that default gateway. And then it goes to the next one, next one, next one all the way until you get to your destination. Now, some of the time the information is blocked right. by some of those devices that are in that hop count, but a lot of the time when you're just going across the public internet, it's just all there and you can see everything. Yeah, it's just trace RT, mm -hmm. and you can do the slash question mark to get information on that, but one fun thing to look at that a lot of people maybe don't know is your ISP, Time Warner, AT&T, any other evil empire you can think of, <laughs> Comcast comes to mind when I say that. The, the ISP, hello. Uh, when you do a trace route for different servers, you'll actually see jumping through all these hops. Mm -hmm. And so you're actually you're not getting a direct connection to the server. You're going through potentially a dozen yeah. different hops. And, Sometimes more. Right. And they might even be owned by different ISPs or yep. different servers, whatever. They all talk to each other. Exactly right. So kind of in interesting information there. Any other networking stuff before we move on to batch files? Well, so if you're interested in ping and you're interested in traceroute, there's kind of an in-between. It's called path ping. That is not one I know about. Yeah, so, so path ping it kind of does a little bit of both. So <laughs> um, the, the, the ping one gives you um, a little bit more information about how long things take and that kind of stuff. And the trace route's a little bit more like, you know, here's your pathway. So path ping is kind of like a meld between the two. <laughs> so, you know, it's a little bit of both worlds. Very cool. And then batch files are sort of... So good. Yeah, they, they work with man prompts. So we use these a lot for testing and test automation specifically. So just as an example, something that we'll often do is run these benchmarks, as you all know, for 1080p, 1440, 4K, and then we'll have ultra, medium, whatever. So there's potentially 20 folders we create for every single video card. So we just sit there and click 
All the time. And then type. And type, yes. yes. Type and click. 20 times per video card. <laughs> no, uh, what we do, so you can do a batch file, which is you just do a notepad, open up notepad, and you can type in, in this instance, mkdir, make directory. Mm -hmm. mkdir space, and then the name of the file, you need quotations if it's going to be with spaces in there. Uh, but you do that. And then that'll actually just, when you run the batch file, dot .bat, you rename it to dot .bat instead of txt, run the batch file, it'll create that folder. Yes. So in this specific example, if you want to create 20 folders, and even you can get more advanced and nest them in each other. Sure can. And uh, you click it once, and then it just Yeah, and it's all there for you. Right. So, so in other words, rather than, uh, you know, programming this or excuse me, typing this every time you write the program once and you create a parent folder for each different graphics card and then you run the program in each parent folder right and it, it's and I, I say program very loosely it's just like we said a batch file and in the end a batch file is mostly just command prompt commands inside of a text document that gets renamed you delete the extension txt and you add the extension .bat. Right, and in Windows, you'll have to tell it to allow you to do that. Yeah, you have to so, show extensions, exactly right. right. So you can do that in the folder options when you go to options. But uh, one of the other useful things here, things like timeout. Timeout's one I use. Such a good one. Yeah, so if or you, pause, even. Right, pause is very good for debugging. Mm -hmm. So if you create a batch file that's supposed to do something cool, and it sort of just opens and closes, now one method I used to use was you try and screenshot it really fast <laughs> and see what the error said. But it turns out you can just type in pause after certain lines and you'll figure out which one it's, it's dying on. Mm -hmm. So that's pause, timeout, what does timeout do? So timeout, you, you do a slash T after, that's the option for timeout, and it's really not an option, it's a required syntax. And then after the slash T, you put in a number of seconds. Right. And so what that does is, let's say that you, you wanted to see the output but you didn't need it to stop the program. So you would say, all right, do this command, then wait five seconds so I can read the output, and then just keep going. And right. that's how the timeout command works. Right, so we'll use that in testing again, where you have like a timeout 120, so two minute timeout, and then it'll launch or kill a program. Yep. So it's another good example. If you want to start a program in a batch file, or even just from command prompts, because they're really all the same yep. command, you just type in start space and then the path to the file or the exe or whatever mm -hmm. and hit enter it'll execute so we'll use that for programs games whatever start drt.exe start dirt rally there you go and it launches it and then you can set a timeout separately and that will you know do wait whatever amount of time before executing the next command which is maybe to kill it. Yeah. So there's task kill, mm -hmm. right? How That's does that a good work? one. Yeah, so uh, task list and task kill kind of go hand in hand. Um, task list, like uh, th this one I've used for, again, we're talking about things that anybody can use um, and that can be useful. Um, if you've ever been infected with a virus before, maybe you lose control of your GUI, right. but you can open a command prompt. You can use task list, and it shows you basically the same thing you see in the processes view of of the uh, task manager and the cool thing is you can add an option to that task list slash SVC and it even shows you what's in each service host and so you can find you know this random thing that's like one two three four a, I am not J, a virus that, that exe yeah. right and so you, you get this thing and you find the the process ID for it or the image name for it which is just the name of the file and then you do task kill and you have to specify slash IM for image name right. and you type the exe name or slash PID and type in the process ID for it. So these are really good for troubleshooting or, like he was saying, just ending a program. Right. So two good ones. Yeah, so if you have trouble ending a program, can't get the command or a task manager, you could certainly do it that way. There's plenty of other commands too, but batch files are really one of the most fun for me to work with. Mm -hmm. And we'll probably do a full video on that in the future, but. But with batch files, again, just think of any sort of repetitive task or if you want to be uh, playfully malicious, you could even do things like a shutdown batch file. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's a good one. Where Or a command prompt that creates infinite command prompts. Oh, I forgot about that one. So it's a good one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. You just use start over and over. Yeah, so that, that that's, that's an endless loop of command prompt. Yeah, and then you put don't, it in the startup do folder. Don't do that. Put it in the startup folder and Your anyone who does it never works again. Yeah. 
and everyone who doesn't know how to get to safe mode is screwed. So that's one fun thing to do. Uh, shutdown, as fun as it is to be malicious, is actually functionally useful as well. Yeah. So uh, I've done this where, for example, if I'm downloading a patch for a game, mm -hmm. like pick an MMO, right? Yeah. You download a patch forever, and you may want to go to sleep, don't want to leave it drawing power, so you can set a, a shutdown command from command prompt and give it a timer. Yep. Absolutely, so you can. You know it'll be done in four hours. You tell it shut down in four hours. Yeah, and um, you can you can, the shutdown command also does restarts too. And one of the cool things is if you had some reason to restart, uh, one of the one of the restart flags you can do is a restart and reopen applications that were previously running, right. all from command prompt. So it's kind of a cool thing. Yeah, yeah. Any other basic? There is one more that I think everybody should know. So one of the things if you're going to use command prompt is you have to understand file structure. You really do. Um, but before you go messing around with all this stuff, please, please, please go get like a, a brief primer and file structure. Right. Like when, when somebody says the root of a drive, you know, you, you didn't know what that means. Or when they say uh, a folder inside of a folder, or when they use the word directory, you need right. to know what these words mean. Um, and one of the, the best commands for navigating around the command yeah, prompt yeah. is cd. Right, CD. Change, change directory. Yeah, or if you don't know what your current directory is because you've changed your prompt with the prompt command, cd will show your current directory. So, so it has two functions. Right, and then dir will show you everything in the directory you're in. Mm -hmm. And That's similarly, really useful. tree. Right. Tree, tree will, will, will in a more uh, slightly more graphical format can do that as well. Right. But dir and cd are fantastic. Yeah. 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 Dir. <laughs> that's that's one that I've used regularly for going into safe mode with command prompt. So if there's a virus issue, I'll always go safe mode with command prompt. And I'm thinking of older Windows operating systems here where you mm -hmm. had no interface, yeah. right? And in that situation, it was good because you're really not loading any risk elements that could contain the virus. And you might want to navigate to your Avast or Norton folder or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, guess, I guess you would navigate to the Norton folder to remove it and never use it again <laughs> because it's terrible. Uh, and when you're there, you can type in dir, find the exe name, start it, and that'll start your antivirus or removal or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Le yeah. So. Lots of really good uses for command prompt. Uh, if it's not something you've learned, just go check it out. You know, try some of the things we, we've mentioned here. Lots of cool online right. guides there for them. And uh, you know, it can do a little networking. It can do a little bit of file management. It can do automation for you if you know how to use the if you right. know how to use the batch files. So command prompt, totally something that as uh, I guess you could call yourself a power user. Right. You, you should know how to do. Speaking of, there is a PowerShell extension. So there's something com things command prompt can't do, mm -hmm. and there's a PowerShell for that. Yeah, so if you are at all interested in learning about servers and doing network administration, you, you definitely need to learn PowerShell. PowerShell is basically the back end of Windows Server. Um, you can run Windows Server with absolutely no GUI, and PowerShell can do everything that you ever wanted it to do. Right. So there you have it. <laughs> the previous video that we did together, if you've seen it, was all about batteries that you'd ever not want to know. <laughs> and now you have command prompts, but this stuff is actually really cool and fun to use and functionally useful. And it's impressive to, as I said, public television viewers. So as always, links in the description below for more information. Postal video has a Patreon link if you want to help us out directly. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time.